Hey guys, Mario Power Driven Diesel here. Will and Todd are both on vacation, and so you know what they say, when the cats are gone, the mice are gonna be swapping turbos. So that's what we're doing. Right now, this truck has an HY35 on it, and it's notoriously trash. So we're gonna be swapping an HX onto it, because I'm really curious. I've never done the test before. Everyone says the HX is better. Today, I'm gonna find out. So that's what we're doing. We're dynoing the HY in stock form. Depending on which boost it makes, we are going to tighten up the gate a little bit, try to get that boost up, see if it can more compare with that HX. Then we're swapping an HX35, bone stock, off a of VP truck, and see what they all do. So first run with the HY, this should be just exactly where we left it. We gotta make sure we're in tune 10. Oh, nope, we're in tune two. Can't leave horsepower on the table like that. Boom, tune 10. So now we're going to do a run and see how much it makes in factory form. <sighs> okay, we got our lock up here just so we can force it. Tune 10, bring it up into the window. What a unit. <laughs> wee wee. My golly, what a unit that was. 327 horsepower. So this time we did it in third gear just because it, uh, it's easier to do the run, it's a little bit quicker, doesn't heat soak it as bad. And so we did pick up 27 horsepower doing that. So EGT's hit 14, so we made 327 horsepower. EGT's hit 1400 on that pull and that was 18 pounds of boost. Nice, so I'm gonna try tightening up that gate a little bit and see if we can make the HY act a little bit better just because the HX is going to be able to, you know, put a boost elbow on it um, to get that boost up and see if that helps at all. But very interesting. So on these HY35s, on, really on any other turbo, you put a boost elbow or some other form of boost control device on there and it works. You can bump your boost up and make a little bit more power. These HYs are hard piped onto the wastegate actuator. So there's no doing that. So really you have two options. Option one is use a J-hook something. Basically, it's just a turnbuckle that you use to hold the gate shut. That disables the gate completely. I'm not looking to do that. What I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna just tighten up that wastegate actuator a little bit, just so it has to build up more boost pressure to be able to open. It's a much more involved version, but I think it's the right answer. And that'll tell us what this thing does. Cause right now it made 18 pounds. That's not a lot. If we can get up into the mid 25s, we can see what how the truck acts with that. So. That's my next step on this hot turbo. So there we go. There's your wastegate and it's dimpled right there to hold it solid so it can't spin. So what we'll have to do, unbolt it, unclip it, drill that dimple out, tighten it way up and reinstall. So let's see how that goes. explain a little bit what we got going on here because these things were really never meant to do what we're doing so if this was like an HX35 or some other turbo where it has a hose what I would do to put the actuator back on is you put a little compressed air into the hose and then that extends the rod you hook up the rod you're good to go this thing doesn't really give you that same um, luxury so we've got a PDD boost leak checker with uh, just a random assortment to plug off this end that way we can use the boost leak tester pressurize the whole cartridge and extend the rod and uh, hopefully it's gonna work so dude look at that love it when a plan comes together <laughs> that worked really well boom okay now we just have to slap the whole thing back on dude look at this unit right here seven blades of 54 millimeter fury with a basically race turbine wheel on the back. Like, I don't know why you can't make a thousand horse on this. So we just tightened up the gate on this factory HY and we put it right back in, no other change. We're gonna dyno it again. I'm gonna say it's gonna make 
the same horsepower, maybe like five or 10 more, but boost is gonna be way up. But I don't really think that this engine at this, in this situation really needed more boost, but we're gonna find out. Have you ever dynoed in such plushness? I mean, I feel like I could like rock a baby, dyno, and like play on my computer all at the same time. It's like, no, little baby, don't you cry. <laughs> okay. If it hits like 40 pounds, which it won't. Nah, if it hits 35 pounds, which it won't, I might let out. Nah, 40. <laughs> Inferno Z. Send it to where it came from. Send it to meet its maker. Okay, we're gonna hit lock up here. We're good to go. Start the dyno. We're good to go. Fans on. We're good to go. So much power! It can't pick up. <laughs> I was wrong. God dang, a hot rod right here, brother. What do we got? 340 horse. That's 13 more horsepower. God dang, brother. Inferno C Armano. We'll uh, go up on the computer right there and compare it. 340 horsepower. So that's up like 13 horse. I think I guessed five to 10. So more than I was expecting. But the crazy thing here is the torque. We went from 760 foot pounds to 851. That's 91 foot pounds of torque. You're definitely going to feel that on the street. Now let's go over to the actual numbers and see what exactly happened. What did Boost do? All those different things. Oh well, yeah, look at that. So EGTs were higher. We made more drive. That kind of makes more sense. Boost was definitely higher. We peaked at 26 pounds from the, I think 18 pounds we, we peaked before. Horsepower was up in the meat where it wanted the fuel and then out top, it didn't really need it. And all it did is make it run a little bit hotter there. So if this is your tow truck, like maybe there's a middle point between that you can set it to and be happy. But ultimately like this would feel good on the street, but it's probably not gonna tow as well just because choking it down with that gate, keeping the gate closed, it doesn't seem to like the EGTs on that. So. Yeah, I mean, pretty impressive. Now we're going to go to the HX35 and see how that compares. I'm really curious. I always heard that like the HY doesn't just isn't a good turbo, but it's the same turbine wheel as a 351, which is an awesome turbo. It should be approximately the same nine centimeter housing. It's not as ideal because of the gate design and the compressor cover is really small. So it definitely has some disadvantages, but for this crowd, I've always was surprised that it, it has as much hate towards it as it gets. And so I'm really excited to to actually do the test and see what it does. So the main difference here, these are both off 24 valve VP trucks, your, your 98 to 02s. The compressor wheel is the same. The difference is that turbine housing. You can see that has a undivided, your HY has your, an undivided nine centimeter housing and your HX has your typical divided 12 centimeter housing. This guy came on all trucks, except for the 01, 02 automatics. That's when this HY comes into play. And like I say, they get some bad rap, but ultimately I think for a very stockish truck, they're both gonna be very capable, but we're gonna swap it on and actually see what it does. Dude, it just feels like a freaking hot rod. Really, it just feels like a trucker, super trucker. I bet this thing would road trip well, other than the fact it's loud. I would put sound insulation in it. I would, I'd have to drive it to know what I'd want to do. I just want it to be quiet, smooth, easy to drive, good steering. I might do rack and pinion if I really cared. And then I would make it make good, reliable, cool power where I could just floor it up any grade, hold speed. And I just want it to be like reliable, but not slow. That's all. And not loud. Whoopa! Are we going with that? Roll this window out, keep it down. For repeatability. I 
almost forgot. Past my window. I'm used to starting at 2,500 in my other truck. I was like, 1,500? We barely started. We actually made more power. Interesting. We picked up another nine horse. Let's compare that. Starting off, bone stock wastegate settings, 349 horsepower. So that made nine more horsepower than the HY did with its cranked up gate and like, what would that be? Mathing 22 horse more than the uh, HY in stock form but the torque is back down. So I bet it's not making the boost that we would have, uh, or we're seeing with that cranked gate. So comparing here, we've got the stock HY35 to the stock HX35. It's actually a lot more meaty through the run. That's actually impressive. I didn't really expect this. Drive pressure was basically the same, but boost was just considerably higher. So here's a plot point, 24.3 versus 21.4. So we we're just higher boost the whole way, but drive pressure was the same. EGTs were a little warmer. We got into a little warmer. It's hard to say for sure, but we made more power through the run just because of that extra boost we had. So very interesting. I think we did one more run just to be fair, apples to apples. We're gonna crank the gate on it, get that boost up like the HY35 was, and then compare it to that cranked gate on the HY35. Okay, let's do that. So like nerve wracking having so much power, just raw power on tap. It's just ridiculous. I mean, the shifts on this thing are wild, man. They have no chill. Okay. God dang, brother. I don't think we picked up any more power with the gate. <laughs> Be real. It was the exact same, 349. Like literally the exact same. Let's look at this right quick. Compare it. Make sure our gate adjustment actually did something. Yep, we gated, we made a little bit. Oh, we did make more torque. So interesting. Boost didn't really go up, drive did. We made less power, interesting. Okay, let's go talk about it. Okay, HX35 with a boost elbow installed so that gate opens a little bit later. We got it adjusted, 349 horsepower. That is the exact same as we did with a bone stock turbo, but check it out. We got our torque back, 863 foot pounds. I'm curious to see what boost drive and all that stuff did. Let's, so we said we we're gonna compare against the HY. Let's first compare it against the stock HX35. I think that's interesting. Comparing right now against that stock HX35, you can see the gate didn't open, and so it made a good amount more torque. Then the gate opened. You can see drive pressure, now this is really interesting. Drive pressure was up about four pounds. Boost was up half a pound. It really did, not even, not even half a pound. So it didn't really like it up top there. Horsepower was down just with that extra drive pressure. EGTs were very similar to say the least. So it didn't like it up top, it loved it down low. Very interesting. Now, in trying to set the wastegate, I wanna compare it to a run where the gate was actually never opening. And so we can kind of compare that really quick. And I think that one's also interesting because a lot of people are like, crank the gate, they hear turbo noises, they're like, heck yeah, this is awesome. It's not. So check this out. We made, I mean, arguably about the same amount of torque, but look at out top here. Drive pressure was way, way high. So with that gate opening, 
Um, like with the boost elbow, we made 36 pounds of drive. With the gate completely shut, we made 52. And because of that, we're down, we're down 22 horsepower, or sorry, 12 horsepower out here. It's not a lot, but in the scheme of things, like you lost power working everything harder. EGTs are hotter. Like it's not a great mod. So definitely, I guess it's really cool to show that you get your torque with a boost elbow, opening the gate later, but you also get that top end letting the gate open. Just closing the gate or letting the gate open all the way, neither of those are the ideal. There is a happy medium that you can hit there. But like we said, we're gonna compare this thing against an HY35 with the gate and see how that acted. So we made more power through the whole curve. Drive pressure was down, the boost was down a little bit and horsepower was up. So right here, just like this very average place in the curve, we were up nine horsepower with the HX35. So I'm actually kind of disappointed in that HY. For some reason I thought it was gonna do a little bit better than this, especially at this 350-ish power level. But either way, it's cool to show like, this is what it does. I mean, if you're trying to swap an HX35 on, trying to pick up another 50 horse, it's not gonna happen, but you'll get about 10 horse from it. That's pretty, that's a you know solid gain right there. You're gonna feel it, it's torquier. It looks like it would have, um, EGT control is pretty similar, it looks like to me. So yeah, very interesting. It's, not, it's a test I've wanted to do for a very long time. So it's, it's really cool. So in conclusion, I'd say if you had a bone stock HX35 just kicking around, you can get from a buddy for free or near free, yeah, slap it on. They have great manners still. It makes that 10 extra horsepower, good torque. You can adjust the gateway easier. You can play around with it and it's a good upgrade. Now, if you're having to spend good money for it, I would definitely hold out for possibly a better and bigger charger. Uh, we're gonna be doing some of that testing here very shortly with this truck, swap some of our 60-64s on, maybe a 60-9, something in that range, see what kind of power we can increase, even at this lower 350 horsepower level, and we're gonna put some injectors in it and see what it can do at a higher power level, really get a good comparison going on. And that's ultimately a big reason why we ended up putting this charger on, is because we wanna compare our charger against the better stock turbo. If we just compared one of our big chargers against a HY35, everyone would be like, yeah, no crap, it picked up power. So now we've got this turbo on, we can do some injector and turbo testing in videos to come. So 350 horsepower is a lot of fun, but we're on the road to 500 horsepower with this truck. So we need a little bit more air, we need a little bit more fuel. So comment down below, which one we should we do first? Should we put injectors into this combo right here, see what we can pick up? or should we do aggressor turbo testing with our current stock injectors? So if you guys like this content and you enjoy this nerdy dino stuff like I do, make sure to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep doing these videos.